Hello Virgo friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Virgo December 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. Well, this is a very powerful time for Virgo. You're getting an invitation to rise to new heights and to move onward and upward in many different aspects of your life. This month's transits are calling for you to take action, but it's only certain type of action because we do have a lot of layers that need to be understood to see how to direct these actions for the best outcomes. And we're going to go into all of this. This is for you if Virgo is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Virgo placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. If you're a very late degree Virgo, so birthdays like September 15th through the rest of the sign or Virgo degrees, 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Libra report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. Okay, so we're going to base, I'm going to base this discussion on all of the ways that your energy wants to move onward and upward and how you can use, yes, even the retrogrades in order to reach those ends. I'll put the, uh, for podcast friends, I'll put the chart as the thumbnail in case you want to check it out. We're going to concentrate a lot of energy down here in this like four to six um, PM range if you were to view this chart as a clock but I'm going to be all over the chart talking about various things, but we have a strong concentration down there. YouTube friends, I'm going to work on the chart. If you don't want to see the chart, scroll up in your screen and you can just listen, or you can find Astro Kisses with Andy Botticelli podcast, and you can just listen that way. Okay, so on our theme of onward and upward, I'm going to layer in the short and long-term factors that are giving you your invitation to rise to new heights and to express these um, upward moving energies in your life. We have three moons this month to talk about, two new moons and a full moon. I'm going to let those be my little template to get back to to help guide us through. The first notable moon is December 1st, new moon at nine degrees of Sagittarius. So the discussion about the moon here has to also include the sun and Mercury in retrograde because these are our placements in Sagittarius. Sagittarius energy is buoyant, it's optimistic. It is the energy of onward and upward. It is the sage on the mountain. It's the bird overseeing all of the earthly troubles and the viewpoints that we can experience as humans that can help us to get to that place. Just like an astronaut looking down at the earth, it looks so peaceful. These extended higher, broader views can help to bring creative solutions and peace and heal your nervous system, which is very much important for Virgos who tend to be warriors. And this is a time for you to reboot your nervous system where you can retrain your neural system, your neural pathways for more optimism, more faith, and more buoyancy. So the sun is bringing vibrance. Mercury is bringing the energy of information. The new moon is bringing this opportunity to establish a new beginning, to make wishes, to set intentions that involve everything having to do with Sagittarius, which this, this Sagittarius uh, dominance that has been happening since November, we had an early beginning to these Sag transits when we had Venus moving through. Uh, so this Sag story has been continuing for a while, but this has to do with education, taking in of information and putting it out teaching, learning, information like sharing, publishing, uh, speaking, anything having to do with creative solutions, international connections, languages, broadening your horizons, having a positive outlook, and expanding your view. Now, these energies do square Virgo. So by nature, they're not in sync with the Virgo parts of yourself. Now, I will give you full credit for being a multidimensional being and having more than just Virgo. This is something that I would like to help educate about. See all these planets in this chart? Planet, 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 everywhere, all of them. Astrologers call things planets, even if they're not officially planets. A planet to an astrologer is a heavenly body that affects us. And sometimes it's a mathematical um, calculation that affects us. But all these things I'm circling here, those are all parts of your being. And then each sign they're in is a part of your being and each house they're in is a part of their, your being and each mathematical connection or not between them is part of your being. So you are complex. You are more than just a Virgo, but the Virgo parts of you will feel very Virgo like, and they will 
come with these certain energies and those energies don't tend to flow well with Sagittarius. So this square here is looking to crack you out of something. But the good news is that it can crack you out of doldrums. It can crack you out of a routine that's not fulfilling. It can crack you out of boredom. It can crack you out of, you know, heaviness and, you know, too much structure, too much focus on material, um, you know, too much responsibility. So hopefully, you know, this will crack you into having more fun. It will be more gregarious. Um, it will be more open. It will be more flowing. And that is a series of these layers that are calling you onward and upward. So your actionable step then is to be open to the possibilities, be open that there's a creative solution, even if it's not logical, and to voluntarily reset the way that you see things, do things a little differently, be open to a different approach, do things that are broadening, and this can help you to flow onward and upward. Now, all of this energy in Sagittarius lights up your fourth house of home and family. We've had a long-standing storyline of home and family because Mars, just somewhat recently into Leo, was in Cancer for a long time. And Mars in Cancer, Cancer rules the fourth house, so we've had, and Mars rules obsession. And even though we've been sliding into the shadow period for a while, you know, there's been a lot of universal focus on home and housing and family and inner roots and, you know, ancestry and that kind of thing. And now, even though Mars has moved on from that position, you have all of this energy here bringing it back up again. So there's an activation of home and family and emotional foundations. Maybe a desire to spruce up or lighten up or clear out clutter or, you know, um, more with less or upsize or downsize or whatever feels like more freedom to you. And that is a very huge key of this time. Sagittarius energy is very much about freedom. So freedom in the home energy. For some people, freedom in the home energy means downsizing because they are not married to their mortgage anymore. For some people, um, freedom in the home environment means moving to a bigger house because there's more room to move around. So your personal subjective experience of what freedom is, is going to get evaluated and re-evaluated because of this retrograde. So Mercury spending the time from November 8th, when it went into the pre-shadow, then to, uh, retrograde on November 25th, it's retrograde until December 14th, and then it takes until January 3rd to regain its full strength. This whole cycle is being spent reevaluating home and family, how you interact with these people in your life, what home means to you, your definition of home. So this energy of lightening up, this energy of freeing it up, of making it more clear is something that is going to be a chance for you to move onward and upward. And it's an area that you can take actionable steps as the opportunities present themselves. If you're inclined, you can also be proactive. Now, when I first started this discussion, I said certain actions and that there are some things to know there. To give you a little background into where we're at in the retrograde direct cycle from the personal planet perspective, personal planets are the ones closest to us, but ones that we have that go retrograde are Mercury, uh, Mars, and Venus. And when any of those are retrograde or their shadow periods, it really shows an energy of the tides coming in. When the tides are coming in, if you try to put something out on the tides, it bounces it right back. So it lends itself to shorter term types of things, you know, sprucing up rather than a big design project, um, you know, something that is easier to accomplish in a shorter amount of time. It's going to be very difficult to get people to work because of Mars retrograde. It's going to be very difficult for people to, to even show up and call you back because of Mercury retrograde. You know, this is a time when taking action steps that are easily resolvable things, you know, patching walls, getting, making repairs, putting insulation around your windows, you know, things that are low consequence, but high reward that you're not going to suddenly wish you didn't have insulation in your windows. You know, you may suddenly wish you didn't paint your entire house Barbie pink, but you're very unlikely to be sad now that you have insulation for your home. You know, so these kind of things that are low stakes but have high rewards are good actionable tips for when the retrogrades are happening because the energies are coming in and it's bringing your energy closer to your immediate environment, closer to your physical body. It doesn't mean that you can't 
go abroad and this Sagittarius energy can go far and wide, but you know, this home energy, wherever home is for you is really coming up. You may go back to a place that felt like home or was a home before, but in general, this is a time for you to rebuild your foundations and anything you can take action on there is like a very inward sort of thing. Anything you can do to strengthen your family ties, your family relationships, resolve any past emotional conflicts that are holding you back. That's all going to be very well served. Okay, so I said that I'm going to let the moon be our guide here to get me through my little template of making sure I tell you everything I wanted to. The next big moon date is December 15th. That's the full moon in Gemini. Okay, so to talk about this, we have to go to the opposite end of the chart where we see not only Jupiter, which we'll talk about soon, but also the full moon of Gemini at 24 degrees. And this again can give you a chance to take actionable steps. This is happening in your house for Virgo. It's your 10th house. Actionable tips here. Take stock of your career progress. This is a great time of reflection with these retrogrades. So you can reflect on your achievements. You may even decide to rest on your laurels a little bit and just relax and have fun and stop pushing. And maybe the Sag energy will, you know, manifest that way for you. This full moon can help you to gain insights on your career path, on your future public path, whether that's for money or just for your, for your life, your passion projects. So the universe wants to bring you onward and upward. And your call to action here is to reevaluate things in your work sector, in your employment sector, involving your parents, the fourth and 10th houses, are involving your parents. You can also look into how to improve your professional reputation, how to assess your progress, how to make necessary adjustments to continue this upward trajectory and this movement onward and upward. There may be certain delays or um, uncertainties that the retrogrades or other aspects have brought. And now is the time to really reevaluate all of those. And the moon can bring things to fullness, completion, fruition, drama, Again, this is in a square for you. So this is like a T-square, it's called. So you're getting kind of pulled and cracked on both sides. And even though that doesn't sound good to be cracked, similar to if you like stretch your spine up really tall and then you twist a little bit and things start cr cracking in there and then you feel all stretched and restored, that is the type of energy that this can be for you is to sort of crack you out of these old ways of being in your home, in your inner world, in your work, in your outer world. And Jupiter is here, even though it's still in retrograde, so some things might have backed up a little bit and gotten a little bit slower. You know, from May 2024 through June 2025, Jupiter is seeking to expand your public presence, expand your career, expand your work, expand your income, expand your employment, expand your experience as a father or a parent or with your father figures or your parental or authority figures. So all of this is happening and all of this is intended to coax you onward and upward. And sometimes that has to come through a little bit of pressure. Okay. But these, these aspects move quickly. So if there is pressure, it's usually something that builds and releases pretty quickly. Okay. So the next and last moon, usually we only have two moons to talk about, but because we have two new moons in this month, at least for East times, Eastern time zone and East, this new moon in Capricorn is a black moon, which makes it even more potent for planting it deeper, giving it more sustenance and helping it to grow and thrive in the future. On the days around December 30th, we have a new moon in Capricorn and that is in fellow earth signs. So this is special and this opens up and changes our discussion from the places where we've got this T-square and some pressure and the conflicts to the place where we have sweet movement and flow. And this has to do with all of this Capricorn energy, which really is even more dominating this month and the Sagittarius energy, and this is technically, you know, Sagittarius is big time. So let's look at what we have going on in Capricorn and how that can affect you. We said December 30th, we've got the new moon. Days around December 30th, we've got the new moon at nine degrees of Cap. We've got the sun moving into Cap around December 22nd. So the moon will be there 30th. Pallas Athena is already there. Venus is there. Ceres is there. So all of these Cap energies make a trine the most favorable aspect in all of astrology for you. That means it speaks, this is this earthy, these earthy transits are speaking your language, practicality, things that you can tangibly see and feel, things that matter, things that make sense. 
they have to do with building, they have to do with systems and structures. So you may see notable improvements and onward and upward movement in these tangible structures. Sometimes quite literally, and sometimes it's figuratively. We've got Pallas Athena there bringing strategy. We've got Venus there bringing money and resources. We've got Ceres there bringing um, sustenance and sustainability. The sun will be there amplifying everything and adding warmth and vibrance, as well as a bright light to see any issues that are interfering um, with your onward and upward progress and to show you the good things and help you be grateful for what already is. Capricorn rules the 10th house that we were speaking of with the Jupiter transit in the full moon. So you've got a lot of energy there in your place in the outer world. And it's dovetailing here, just kind of spreading for your inner world and your outer world. Now, specifically for Virgos, Cap energy lights up your fifth house of Leo, which is your fun and your romance and true love and children and your bucket list, as I like to associate it. So, you know, your creative expression, the things that make you feel bright. I always like to say when things, we see the sun rules the fifth house. So whenever I talk about sun aspects or something having to do with Leo or the fifth house, I always like to imagine the energy of a sunflower. And whatever makes you feel like you are raised up tall and strong and stretched up to the sun and all uplifted, that's the energy of your fifth house, you know, just the spark of love and romance, the delight of your inner child or being around, you know, the wonder of children, your hobbies, your pleasures. So you've got all of this energy trining your Virgo placements, making, making it a huge time for onward and upward movement towards having fun and towards having more relief and having more release. And so your call to action here is just to have more fun and let this happen and embrace these joyous times and to build structures that allow for you to experience this without feeling guilty or without feeling behind. A couple of other actionable um, tips that you can use for this time that work really well with the retrogrades is to plan your creative projects, you know, set specific goals for them, small goals, not your big, big, big goals, because what do we say about the tides? Your big goals are out here, you know, way out here. But if you set little goals, they're just like little crumbs along the way that you can leave for the universe to come and find you and support you. You can also commit to taking steps to improve your romantic world or your world as a parent or working with children or your creative babies. If you don't have any human children or you don't work with human children, your creations of any kind can, can fit this bill. Okay, let's talk about a few important things to know about retrogrades. I gave you the dates for Mercury retrograde. For Mars retrograde, October 7th is when the shadow period began. December 6th here this month, we officially have it retrograde. After all this ado, it's finally retrograde. This uh, retrograde shadow period was building, building, building. And I'm very excited that these days I hear, have heard people telling me that many astrologers are starting to talk about these pre and post shadow retrograde periods. When I started doing YouTube um, 12 years ago now, I have my 12 year anniversary in October, last October. Um, nobody was talking about shadow periods because it was too complex and people didn't want to bog people down with it, I guess, or some people just didn't even know about this. But I'm very happy that um, I've been so outspoken about this and now it's almost commonplace to speak about these pre-shadow transits and these post-shadow transits that are so critical to understand because if you try to isolate your guidelines for retrogrades just within the retrograde, you're going to really be missing the mark because this is a building process and then it's a fading process. So the, the energies are really present. So December 6th through February 24th of 2025 is the official retrograde. And then it takes until May to get Mars up to full steam. So we're working with the energy of retrograde, which is the energy of inward and backward. It's the energy of being the earthworm, of redoing everything with RE, you know, re going over old soil to make it fertile for the future, recommitting, regenerating, rest, <laughs> rest, right? Rest. And, um, editing, you know, anything where you go back and do something again. And Mars and Mercury are, are good contributing to this. Now, that means people can come back from past projects. And since Mars is in Leo and Leo rules the fifth house, which I've just been getting all excited about here, 
you know, you've got extra oomph and wherever Mars is, that's where your obsessive energy goes. Now, two things tend to happen to Mars retrograde. There tends to be a reversal or an amplification of how you use your energy. That's what Mars represents. So either you'll get completely lazy and unambitious and disinterested and lethargic, or you'll get super inspired and hot on something. But usually what happens is that you feel it both ways. You get really hyper-focused on certain things, but not necessarily things you're supposed to be doing <laughs> or things that other people want you to be doing. But you know, it, it gets to be like super hyper-focused. So you'll see that you may be getting super hyper-focused on these Leo things, uh, the relationships, the romance, the kids, the creative projects. So you might have a resurgence of inspiration or the opposite can happen. If you were flowing really well, you can have a reversal and the reversal can make you be blocked and uninspired and feel like things are going backwards. So, you know, just watch for these energy shifts and see what lessons you can learn from them, especially about keeping balance. Also remember that it's not just you being affected by these. So it's harder to get other people to do things if it's not on their hot list, you know, what, what they're really hot on at that time. Getting people to work, um, just went to the mechanic and he was like, can't get these guys to do anything. I don't know what's wrong. I don't want to get into it. I knew that the Mars shadow period was progressing, um, but I knew what was going on. He's like, I don't know what it is all of a sudden. I can't get them to work. <laughs> and this is, this is typical. You know, it makes it just harder. Sometimes it feels like you're moving through sludge, um, but then sometimes it enlivens and awakens and bring things back around. But in general, it's a time to avoid scheduling, avoid committing. You, you may like feel really gung-ho on something one day and then just want to rest. And you give yourself the freedom to do that when you are careful with your commitments. So be really careful with commitments during this month and for the whole time that the personal planet retrogrades are a factor. Now, as I said, mid-month, um, Mercury is going to flip and you're going to start seeing some shifts. Certain things will start, you know, the appliances will start working better. Communication will start flowing better. Scheduling and seeing a little bit into the future is going to start working better. And even though we'll still be deeply into Mars retrograde, you will feel a change in the experience with one of those planets moving direct. And every day into December, that will start to clear up. Now, fortunately, um, the holiday season is most of the activities tend to be in the second half of the month. Um, but you know, it will be just new going direct. And so it's going to be, it may be hard to schedule basically. So if you can just give people a, an in pencil, yes, for plans that you're making, you'll keep the pressure off and you'll get to enjoy yourself more without all of these commitments. If you can be brave enough to say maybe instead of yes or no, then I think that can serve you very well. The fact that Mars is going retrograde in your 12th house is also giving you opportunities to move onward and upward. You know, your chance to truly rise upward is going to stem a lot from doing inner work at this time because this 12th house is a water house. It's your subconscious mind and Mars is moving its way through here in retrograde. So you have the opportunity, you have the call to action to give you, you know, to basically put a fire under your butt to confront these hidden fears or these unresolved issues that are affecting your confidence or your energy level or your health or your mental wellness. You may have subconscious blocks that are hindering your progress. Getting into mind work, mindset work, the magic of mindset. I've been doing this work for 25 years and I cannot believe what I've been able to accomplish with mindset work. It's mind blowing to me. You know, I don't generally go, go around listing all of the crazy things I've accomplished um, because I'm more focused on, you know, other things. But when it comes to mindset, if I can convince you to point your attention to this, it's, um, it's worth it. It's worth it to mention it because everything is mindset. We create from our mind. And there are people that know things that you don't know. And if there's someone that has the kind of things you want, studying what they know. This is how I started in this. I had certain things. I wanted to be free from golden handcuffs and I had to plot how to get out of my job and be able to be my Sagittarius self and flow better with my work and feel like I was contributing to the world, not under the thumb or constraints of someone else's time schedule. And I became obsessed with that. So I started studying what people who created that knew that I didn't know. And that what brought me into all the stuff that I'm into today. And one of the things that they knew is that the power of your subconscious mind 
to heal, it can create. And this is the call to action that Virgo has now to move onward and upward is to do this inner work. Subliminals, tons of them on YouTube, free. Affirmations, um, you actually even get a free, when you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, I'm going to refer back to this here in a minute, but um, you get one of my relax and unwind and let go, train your brain audio subliminal. I started making subliminals a while ago when I realized how powerful they were. Uh, yeah, so basically anything having to do with accessing the power of your unconscious mind is what Mars retrograde wants you to do. So I've got a couple of more dates to give you, but on while we're on this topic, um, AnnieHelpsYou.com is the place to go for, it's like the hub for all of my free things. I give most of my work away in the world for free. Um, and then I give even more stuff for free to my free VIP community, early horoscope access, all of these free things, my 28 day virtual coaching program, just any number of things. But if you want to have more dates besides the ones I'm giving you in this uh, report, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address in, click receipt, get the welcome letter, click on the archive link, in the search button once you're in the archive link with December 2024 astrology and that will be where I do the written version of all of the things that I think are most important for the month including a lot of dates my sweet and salty date list my favorite aspects of the month ones to be most most awareful and careful of will be there but I do want to give you two more dates that are important and I'm going to give you a saltier one first and I am also going to tell you how you can make lemonade out of this salty one so Saturn and Jupiter are coming together in a square again. August and September, they did this and they, it loosened up a little bit and now it's back. And it's, it's really, really in close proximity all month. It's just official in the days around the 24th, but you'll be feeling it for a while. This is a long-term storyline. The story of Jupiter, which is Sagittarius, the planets that we have going on now. The story of Saturn, which is these Capricorn planets that we have going on now. So it's like the expansion of Jupiter and the restriction of Saturn, the discipline of Saturn and the freedom of Jupiter are at odds with each other. So the, the optimal lemonade making outcome of this square is balance. Let Jupiter give some life and some flow to the restrictions, places of restriction in your life. Let Saturn give some discipline to the places where you have Jupiterian excess in your life. And you can really make the most of this. Two key words here, streamlining and discernment. Jupiter likes to get its fingers in a lot of pudding pies. Between this square and the retrogrades, you may be getting called to hone in on fewer things and get really focused on those. And you may be called to add more freedom, more uh, creative solution viewpoints, more optimism to some heavier things that Saturn may be representing in your life. Okay, so I'll end off on my favorite aspect of the month, which is December 19th, Venus, which was in Capricorn. It will move into Aquarius, and when it does, it will trine Jupiter. Venus and Jupiter are the great benefics. They're this, you know, tend to have the sweetest, most easy flow. And when they're together, they expand love and money and confidence. So you could get some just automatic boosts here, or if you have to do some you know, of your action steps. Remember keeping your action steps small, but mighty close to you, but important. They can be stepping stones on your path to your bigger goals, but it's not really the time to try to launch big things, but you can still take some serious action steps internally and externally. And these date, the dates around the 19th are a really good time for that. Okay. So if you have resonated with my work, then please click like and subscribe and click the bell. I've heard that if you don't click the bell, my Posts won't go into your feed, but that's what you can do to help YouTube know that you resonate with my work. And you can also enable notifications and all of those things will help guarantee that you won't miss anything from me. If you love the dates, sweet and salty dates, things to be aware and careful of, the awesome aspects, definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address and click receive to get my very informative weekly newsletter. You get so many free things. Most of my work in the world is free. You get even more free stuff as a member of my free VIP community, which is what you become when you put your name and email address in there. When you click receive, you will get the welcome letter delivered into your inbox. It could be in spam. You'll have to move it into your inbox. Click on the archive link there. 
and then put in the search December 2024 astrology and that's where you will find the sweet and salty dates. I always email that out a month early to um, my VIP friends so that you can prepare and know the dates ahead of time and know what you're getting yourself into. And if you're a visual learner, you can see all the dates there and have everything in a written format. So at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you can unleash by joining my free VIP community. You can upgrade by accessing my secret star portal. This gets the earliest possible access to all of my work. You do get the um, horoscopes and other posts early in my free VIP community too. And then you get them extra early in the secret star portal. You also get written horoscopes monthly for each sign and so much more when you upgrade there. And if you want to learn astrology, then you can click on up level and see my options. You can start with the basics or you can dive deep into my becoming a professional astrologer mastery certification course. If you think I put a lot into my free work, you should see what I put into this course. It has well over hundred modules and growing and it can take you from beginner to earning money in a very short amount of time um, if you apply what I teach you that way. And for people who have already been well-versed with astrology, if you can't seem to tie it all together because you know so much and you don't know where to go in the chart to give a concise, effective reading every time, that is my specialty. Plus, if you're trying to monetize your love of astrology, that is my area of expertise. So you can click on up level when you're there at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.